Hey guys, it's Stoll here with Total's Basement Records. How's everyone doing in the VC community? Hope everyone's doing excellent. This is going to be kind of a new episode I'm trying. So I do this at work when I work at the record store. Um, I kind of put them on our um, Facebook page and I share them to tons of other vinyl groups. Some of you may know it. Um, I do kind of uh, anniversaries for each day of the week. Um, you know, So today I'm going to be doing... January 20th, and it could be any year. Um, I, so I'm probably going to be start doing a few of these. Like, I, I'm most likely not going to do, you know, seven days a week of them. I, I may do a few in a row, then stop for a while, or who knows. Um, but we're going to start off with, in 1982 with a little person um, called Ozzy Osbourne. Yes, this was the famous, um, <laughs> someone threw a bat on the stage, and he took it. And ripped it off, and it was in Iowa. I believe it was like yeah, in Des Moines, I believe. And that was in 1982 on this day. So a little special shout out to Ozzy. You know, I mean, how many times have we heard people talk about that? I mean, I don't need to go into any any detail. I mean, we've all heard it several, several, several hundred times. Um, but uh, yep, that's the answer for that. Next, Def Leppard, Pyromania. Um, I'm not sure if this was their biggest, uh, I, not 100% sure if this was their biggest album, but I know it's right up in the top three. I mean, they have three just massive albums. Um, I was, I, I'm not that big of a Def Leppard fan anymore. I don't hate them. I don't love them. I find them right in the middle. Um, it's been a long time since I put a Def uh, Leppard record on, but I used to really like them as a kid. Um, especially like that 12 and 13 and then kind of through, um, probably, probably through high school. And then I just, you know, I really just kind of stopped listening to them, listen to them a lot. Um, but, uh, and this is their, uh, first album where Phil Collins started producing this as well. Which I did not know he, uh, did that on this album, which was, makes it that much cooler. <laughs> Not the Phil Collins that you're thinking, oh, no, guitar player Phil Collins from Def Leppard. All right. Oh, and we got a birthday today. Happy 70th to Kiss lead singer and uh, rhythm guitar player Paul Stanley. Um, uh, that's another band I enjoyed more when I was a kid um, or a teenager than a, a, a kid, but... Uh, you know, I own uh, actually quite a bit of Kiss albums. I've never bought one. I when I worked at Got Junk, I got like I, I told previously before. I got quite a few records. Um, people were just throwing away, and there was a few. I met this one record guy. He tipped me in um, like two Sex Pistols albums, and I forgot what other one. Um, and one of them that uh, I forgot. It's like the what is it? The green and kind of peach uh, album, I forget. I'm not a real big Sex Pistols fan, but it's a pretty good pressing of it. I mean, I was like, yeah, I'll take it, absolutely, because we talked vinyl for a little bit. This is probably f almost, uh, definitely five years in that area. But, and one of the persons was throwing away a bunch of, like, records that, like, I would look through, and I personally... There were some times where I just let records go. I really wish I did it, but I took quite a few. I could have took a lot more. Um, but uh, oh, I'll tell you a story after this. Um, I got probably seven to eight Kiss records that I've never paid from all of them in great condition, too. I actually need to look them up on um, uh, Discogs just to see if what maybe might be some type of special pressing. I never looked up on them before. Oh, but man, I, it is a, it's not really a great story, it's a sad story. Um, I was not on this job. Um, someone had uh, two full trucks of records they dumped, and it's not, they were all got ruined. This guy's, um, God, it was like his, it wasn't his basement. It was something like his garage got flooded or something kind of weird. Like it was an outhouse, where he, and he was a DJ where he just had, Tens of thousands of thousands of thousands of records. So for one age, you got junk truck. You can well, you can fit uh, eight full size refrigerators, 
in that uh, bed. Oh, God, I don't remember the measurements. It's like 10 by 8 by uh, 5. Sorry, it's been a long time since I worked there. They're big trucks, and they can put a lot, especially of these records. Oh, my God. And to fill up the trucks, well, I think almost two of them, I believe. Um, oh, my God. So, I, if I had to guess, it, oh, my God, we had 40-plus thousand records. And they were all, like, ruined, just water damaged. And I don't remember exactly how, like I said, it wasn't a basement. It was something odd when the guy... When some of my guys, uh, some of my friends told me when they came back, I was like, wait, what? I just don't remember. But uh, anyways, moving on, moving on. Oh, and I met the same album of the day. Uh, Dino Dinosaur Juniors, Give a Glimpse of What You're Not. Fantastic album. This came out, I think, in 2016, 17. There we go. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, the last one, um... Oh, no, not the last one. Oh, all right. Sorry, I got a little off topic. We're just, you know, we're just flowing here. We're flowing. All right. Let's see. 1988, the Beatles Hall of Fame. That's when only um, George, <laughs> Ringo, I know Yoko, and John Lennon's kids, I don't remember. I know his son's name, Sean. I don't remember his daughter's name. Came up to accept everything. And uh, Paul McCartney was, did not... Did not show up because of some, I think some lawsuits, something that was still going on between all of them. So he stepped out, which is, man, I wonder if he regrets that. Um, man, I mean, Hall, rock, I mean, Rock and Roll of Fame, I mean, man, you think you would have, well, I mean, Axel did the same thing pretty much. You know, I'm not going to go. <laughs> But I wonder if he, he truly does regret that. I've been uh, I'm not the biggest Paul McCartney fan. I was always a George Harrison and John and then I then Ringo and Paul was always my least favorite. But I've been watching a lot of uh old Howard Stern um like the whole episodes with Paul McCartney on um, on um YouTube. He's definitely grown on me a lot more since I've watched that. I think Ringo might be my least favorite. And he's probably the least talented one out of the group. <laughs> Ringo, not Paul. Paul's extremely talented. I'm not disrespecting him as a musician. I mean, great guitar player, bass, phenomenal writer. I'm sure he can fucking play the drums, man. What can't that? I mean, he's a Paul, Sir Paul McCartney. All right. Oh, this is the last one. When Zeppelin came over... They started coming over here. They had one of their, um, and I was upset. They didn't say what state it was in, but this was in 1969, January 20th. Um, was their smallest performance they ever played. It was, uh, only 55 people showed up. Yeah. Can you believe that? <laughs> and, um, I believe they got paid about 250 bucks. So, you know, 55. Oh my God, I would love to have been there. One of those people. I would, man, I would love to talk to someone about um, who was in that crowd. Curious how long they played for after they realized, oh, there's only like 50 people. Oh, man. Very curious on that. All right, guys. Um, That's going to be it, man. Let me know what you think of this. If I should keep kind of doing more of these or is this a, is it just a bust? Um. You know, always right back and whatnot. I think it's kind of fun. Regardless, even if you think it is a bust, I'm going to do a few more, I think. But if you guys like it more, maybe you can be encouraged. I'll do some more than just a few. Um, but that's going to be it for uh, January 20th, guys. All right. Uh, have a good one.